Should you join the UK Armed Forces? Hey everyone and welcome to The Savvy Squaddy. In this video I'm going to suggest a number of different reasons why you should join the UK Armed Forces. I've taken the points as suggested by many of my Instagram followers and categorised them for this video. So these are points that are shared amongst many people within the armed forces. Also, these points are relevant for the RAF and the Royal Navy, but since I am in the British Army, I will be sharing my anecdotal experiences from that perspective. If you want to see the points as to why people are leaving the armed forces, then check out this video. Good to see what both sides are saying. And if you are inclined to leave some negative comments down below, at least be constructive in your approach. Now, if you watch this video, like what you see, are thinking of joining the British Army and want me to be your mentor, then reach out to me via Instagram or the email on screen now. I will be happy to help guide you in starting your military career. Right, first up on the list of reasons to join is financial. In the armed forces, you are paid a salary that increases most years and with promotion. It is guaranteed and you know exactly how much you will get, so it makes financial planning much easier. Whilst you serve, you are entitled to subsidise accommodation. This comes in the form of SLA or Single Living Accommodation and SFA or Service Family Accommodation. Not all, but many SLAs are single rooms with an ensuite situated on camp. You would live here Monday to Friday and then go home on the weekends if you choose to do so. The monthly price for a junior rank is around £80 and you don't pay utilities either. Such a great opportunity to save a hell of a lot of money if you are sensible with it. Also, a junior private, not long out of training, living in the block, who is single and no dependents, is better off than over 60% of the UK population in terms of disposable income, which is important since that is what you will have to spend on shit. What other job can you start with no qualifications and be better off than 60% of the UK population? If you have a family, then you could live in SFA, which are houses that are subsidised. I currently pay around £400 a month for a three-bed terraced house an hour from London on the train, which has an attached garage. That monthly cost does also include council tax. The monthly rent for that property on Civvy Street is over £1,200, so a good size subsidy. When in SFA, you don't pay a water bill, but you do have to pay gas and electricity bills, and these are not subsidised unless your SFA happens to also be behind the wire on camp. But while subsidised living sounds great, and for the most part it is, unfortunately not all SFA and SLA are in the best condition, and the company that has the contract to deal with all of them are not performing to the standard they should be. But don't let that put you off. Along with accommodation, food is also subsidised, but only food provided to you on camp. You don't get money back for your weekly food shop in Tesco. Breakfast, lunch and dinner are provided, and depending on what meal you go for, costs a couple of quid per course. I live out and bring in a packed lunch so I rarely use the scoff house. You will hear and see a lot of negativity about the standard of food on offer. Certainly much of those criticisms are valid but just from my own anecdotal perspective I have had much more positive experiences with the food than negative. The pension is another financial benefit of being in the armed forces. You may hear people say that it's shit. Don't listen to them. Most of the time they don't even actually understand it. The pension schemes have changed a number of times over the past couple of decades and each one is not as good as the previous but it's still a great pension. It's non-contributory, meaning you do not pay into it. It is guaranteed, meaning you will 100% get it regardless of what happens with the stock market. Most workplace pensions are invested in the stock market. If there is a crash, then your pension is affected. That is not the case with the armed forces pension. If you want to learn more about them, there is a playlist here on the channel that can help you understand it all. Being in the armed forces means you are financially secure and stable. Your monthly income is guaranteed. This benefit became even more apparent during the plague. A lot of civvies either lost their job or took a reduction in pay with furlough. Not us in the military. And because of certain measures put in place, not all, but many units spent a few months at home doing f**k all while being paid in full. Having that financial security relieves a lot of stress and pressure when economic downturns and hard times inevitably fall upon us. Something I didn't really appreciate until recently was free medical and dental care. My wife needed some dental work and the waiting list for the NHS patients was too long, so we had to go private and pay for it. In the armed forces, it is all free. For the serving person, that is, not their family. And that is the same with medical. I have had an instance where I had to go to see a specialist at a private hospital and didn't need to pay a penny 
nor wait a long time to see anyone. And finally, within the financial group are the allowances, bonuses and benefits that are available to us. You get paid more for being abroad and being away from your home. There are tour bonuses for some ops. Some job roles have signing up bonuses. There is the forces help to buy scheme to help with the deposit on a house. There is financial aid for before and after school clubs for eligible children. You get reimbursed a percentage of your fuel costs if you commute. Every camp has a gym which is free so no membership fees and a lot of them are really well equipped and that's just to name a few. Personally I think we are paid well but there are people who disagree and some of their points are valid. Of course I would love to be paid more but when all things are considered the compensation is good. I've done a number of videos which help put this into perspective from showing how we are paid more than minimum wage to how much I would have to earn on Civvy Street if I left. I will link them below. My next reason for you to join the armed forces is the education, personal and professional development that it can offer you. There are a lot of jobs within the armed forces, many of them require a trade. The British Army is one of the biggest employers of apprenticeships in the UK. All of these courses will be paid for and more and more nowadays lead to official qualifications which are recognised on Civvy Street. The military offers financial support as well if you want to do a specific course or even get a uni degree. Standard learning credits and enhanced learning credits are both financial aid schemes to help you with your education. I have known a number of people to get uni degrees which have been mostly funded by the military. Some of them have also been able to skip straight to the third year of course due to the education and qualifications they had already received through the military. I have done loads of courses and got most of my driving licenses through the military and all paid for. The opportunities out there for personal and professional educational growth are insane. They not only enhance tactical and technical abilities but also foster leadership, problem solving and adaptability which are vital qualities in both military and civilian life. This prospect alone of acquiring valuable transferable skills, knowledge and qualifications should make the UK Armed Forces an appealing choice for you if you are seeking a fulfilling and rewarding career which can only develop you. Sort of on the same vein as education, would you like to learn to ski, snowboard, bobsleigh, mountain climb, kayak and so much more? Another reason to join the armed forces are for the sports and adventure training opportunities. The saying, civvies pay thousands for this, is quite applicable here because they genuinely do. Most units do some form of AT every year. A popular one is usually skiing in France for a month and the personal contribution is a couple hundred quid and that is all in. To do that as a civvy would generally cost thousands. You can travel all over the world doing different types of AT in sports and receive coaching qualifications in them as well. And if you are able to play at the pro level of a sport then you will be able to compete at that level representing the army, navy, RAF and even the UK. You will even be given time away from work to train and compete and this could be for months or even in some cases years. From my own experience I competed in luge and made it to the British Championships and that took me to Germany, Austria and Norway. I was even taken off course to go and train for competitions at the reluctance of my chain of command. There have been people who represent their respective service in the Olympics at their chosen sport. Again the opportunities are almost endless but it does require some work as they don't just land on your lap. Spaces are often limited when opportunities do pop up and so it does pay not to be a because you are more likely to get picked if you are a pleasure to be around and a hard worker. Since being in I have been caving in Wales, rock climbing in the Rockies in Canada, luge as previously mentioned, sailing, kayaking, I was going to go scuba diving after doing all the training but I was then deployed, the box standard mountain biking and hill walking in various places and I don't intend to stop there. Milk the military for all it offers, I do and I have had a great 9 years so far. I mentioned a few different countries there and that leads me on to my next reason to join the armed forces and that is for the travel. It does vary on job role but you could end up going to many different countries, experiencing their culture, seeing the sights, all whilst working there and getting paid, albeit it's not always that glamorous. In my nearly 9 years of service I have done 14 countries and have spent very close to 2 years abroad and whilst I did not get to relax and have fun in all of those countries that didn't take away from the amazing experiences that I had. Plus in the majority of them I did get time to go out, explore and take it all in. Here are the countries I have been to in my time and some of them I have visited multiple times. I have been to a few extra but I personally don't count countries that I land in for a connecting flight and don't even leave the airport. You could be sent abroad for many reasons, operations, overseas training, adventure training, defence engagements, permanent postings, battlefield studies, sports and more. Again the opportunities are there but I would be lying if I said every time would be like a holiday. Of course it isn't. You are being paid to do a job, so naturally business comes before pleasure. 
But also something I do want to mention, if you are not comfortable with spending a lot of time abroad or away from home, then do your research and join a unit that suits your needs. There is nothing worse than having a useless c who doesn't want to travel, seems to always get injured or sick around the time a deployment is coming up, and then some other poor f***er has to backfill and gets fragged doing back-to-back -back exercises or deployments. Have a look at this heat map and see that the majority of the armed forces are located in the south of the UK. Do your research to see where your unit you would like to join is located. If you are from Scotland and want to join a Challenge 2 regiment, well, all three of them are located in Tidworth with Salisbury Plain at the back door. Driving home every weekend to see mum, dad, your partner, your dog, etc. will cost a lot of money in fuel, which you can get a bit of money back for, but it would also cost a lot in time, and you might build up resentment towards your job because of it. Do your research and decide on your priorities. If staying close to home is important for you, then try and join a unit which is more local. If the unit you want to join is on the other side of the country, then you need to weigh up the pros and cons before making that decision. But bear in mind, you are in the military. You can be posted anywhere and deploy anywhere. If you aren't comfortable with that, then perhaps this is not the career path for you. Personally, I have benefited greatly from all the reasons I have mentioned above. And if you are watching this and thinking of joining the UK Armed Forces, then you could too. They are not all givens, and some do actually require some work on your behalf, but the military has so much to offer if you are just willing to put the work in and take advantage of those opportunities. There are people who have no doubt had bad experiences with the military. That is unavoidable. We are, after all, an organisation of over 190,000 serving personnel, so it is inevitable that there will be unhappy people and disgruntled veterans. It is very important to do some research yourself, speak to people, learn about the roles you are interested in, weigh up the pros and cons and make your own decisions. Don't let me or the Debbie Downers do the thinking for you. The armed forces offer so many great and unique opportunities. The community, at least in my experience, is amazing. I work with some amazing people and have made lifelong friends. Of course, there are the oxygen thieves, but again, we are a large organisation. They are bound to be there. I just tend to stay clear of these people. Being in the army has given me a sense of purpose, has led me to where I am today and I wouldn't change a thing. I've had some negative experiences and days where I think, what the hell am I doing here? But the pros hugely outweigh the cons and the military has made me a much better person today than I would have been had I not joined. If you were young, just out of school, perhaps lost and not sure what to do with your life, then maybe some time in the armed forces could give you some direction. There is a minimum service of four years and you can learn and do a lot in that short time. It can be a very good stepping stone into adult life and help set you off in the right direction for future success. On top of that, if you are single and have no kids or other dependents, you will be financially well off providing you do not go out and spunk all your money on mindless consumeristic shit. You can really use that time where you are single, living cheaply to set yourself up to be financially secure and successful for your later life. Going in with this knowledge will set you off on the right foot and put you in a better financial position than your potential future chain of command. If you were interested in joining up, then just Google how to join the British Army or Royal Navy or Royal Air Force and it will take you where you need to go and show you what you need to do. There are tons of different job roles available in the armed forces. Don't just think that all the roles are combat roles. They are not. If you aren't particularly keen on being in the infantry and kicking doors down, then there are many roles that are needed to support what the crayon eaters do. From cyber to diver, you'll be spoilt for choice. And don't forget, if you're looking to join the British Army, send me a DM or email me and I will be happy to mentor you as best I can and give you all the advice I have to offer. To finish up, joining the UK Armed Forces can be a life-changing decision with numerous benefits, from the financial security of a guaranteed salary and subsidised accommodation to the opportunity for personal and professional growth through education and training. The military offers a wide range of perks. The chance to travel and experience different cultures coupled with adventure training and sports opportunities, could add an exciting dimension to your career. While challenges will arise, remember to do your research, weigh the pros and cons, and make an informed decision that aligns with your goals and priorities. Remember, the military can be a stepping stone to a bright future, setting you on the right track for success in life. Hopefully, this video has helped you understand what the armed forces has to offer. Are you looking to join? If so, which service? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.